Hello, and welcome to Crypto Exposed. Okay, guys, got a good one here for you today. We have an interview with Lehman Baird, and this is with Max Walker Williams, who is a developer on Hedera. And this is actually from Davos, so I was a little late to the party in regards to this, but found it, watched it, really liked it. So taking my bullet points that I like to address and I'm just going to add my little two cents in here because the thing is when I watch these videos and I just look at the content that I create it's just funny how much we're just on the same page and I keep trying to tell you guys all the things that I do in this content about Hadira and when I see it being reiterated by you know the likes of Liam and Baird I'm like yeah man like this is what I'm talking about and it does let me know that I'm thinking in the right way because if Lehman thinks this, then I know I'm thinking on the right lines. You know, I know I'm thinking my mind's in the right place. So really great stuff to see in this interview. And it is a great interview if you guys do want to see it. Um, Max Walker Williams has posted it on his uh, X profile, but it has been reposted by um, Hedera's X profile. So if you just go on Hedera's X profile, scroll and look for it, you will find it in there. But yes, let's get into this. So the first things first. Um, Max just asks Lehman how he's found Davos, like how he's found the whole experience and whatnot. And the first thing that Lehman speaks on is how much he's enjoyed this and just meeting like-minded people. And one of the people he specifically mentions is Brad Garlinghouse. Now, you guys will remember I did a video on this not long ago about Brad Garlinghouse and Lehman Baird meeting up together and doing a very quick, short interview and saying that, you know, there's very much a potential here for Ripple and Hedera to unite and potentially join forces. So this is something that they were discussing. And Lehman was really excited about that. And that was really good to see because to see how enthusiastic he seemed, like I did say it in my video originally, like I was like, mm, is this just one of these things where it gets discussed, but nothing really comes from it. But Lehman seemed really excited. Now, again, maybe he's just doing that for the camera. I can't say for sure, but he seemed very positive about it, which was really nice to see. And, you know, this is the thing that I was saying to you guys is, you know, unity is what we need. But we'll get into that a little bit further because he does go into that in a little bit more detail. So we'll carry on. So from there, Max asks him like the kind of things that have been discussed. And one of the first things he brings up and the main thing is tokenization. What have I been telling you guys? Tokenization, RWAs, tokenization. I keep telling you guys and he said, it's a game changer. He said tokenization and AI. Those are the two main topics. So you know how much I tell you guys about tokenization and how much to look out for it. Lehman is saying it right here. I'm telling you guys tokenization is huge. And so um, they're talking about, you know, that's been one of the prominent topics along with AI. And yeah, I'm not surprised about that. To me, tokenization is one of the most promising things from blockchain technology like bar none like it is one of the biggest things that will come from crypto technology so i'm not surprised about that um ai again not surprised because it is one of the things that's at the forefront right now and if you start to connect that with blockchain technology as well i said this in a previous video who knows where that could go so you know ai is a big thing and not just because you know not just because of what it can bring but also like the potential dangers and the potential benefits right because you know, there's like a scary side to AI, you know, like taking jobs and will AI become, you know, self-sufficient and then become um, sentient, you know, will it have its own mind and that kind of thing. Like there's these kind of dangers that people have about AI. And I, I do understand it to a degree because I'll just give you a very quick example. Um, the whole thing with the voice that you can do now where you can like basically get someone's voice for like three seconds and then you can literally you know mimic their voice so i could get someone's voice three seconds is all it takes and then i could like put their voice on a song or i could just say something and then it will turn it into their voice saying it that's scary because think of the kind of stuff you could do with that like let's just say on a political level right like you could have someone who you know makes some kind of threat but it's not really that person and they're thinking hey this is going to start a huge war or something like you know that kind of thing so if it's in the wrong hands and it's used in the wrong way, this could be very dangerous. We do have to acknowledge that. So definitely a thing that we have to like acknowledge the potential pitfalls here. But there's also a lot of promise for it. There's also a lot of benefits that it can bring as well. 
Okay, moving on. So then Lehman also goes on to talk about how they've been discussing how they could try and make blockchain technology like more accessible, right? And for, you know, financial inclusion for, you know, the billions of people who can't touch this technology and that kind of thing. Um, that's the great thing about this technology. Like it is actually making it a lot more accessible for the people who couldn't really have this type of inclusion. So for example, if there's someone who couldn't have a bank account, well, if you've got a mobile phone, you can open a crypto wallet, right? You know, you've not got to go through all the onboarding process and the KYC to open up like a, a, a MetaMask wallet. Do you see what I'm saying? So yes, there's definitely that option and they want to try and make it more accessible, try making it even more accessible. And this is what helps with mass adoption, right? Making it more accessible to the average person and even the people who in other circumstances wouldn't be able to have access to this type of technology that's definitely going to aid with mass adoption. So I definitely think he's in the right frame of mind when he's talking about that, because that's definitely what we need in regards to trying to expand it and make it more accessible and make it more usable and, you know, just helping gaining value ultimately as well, because the more people are using it, the more value that's coming into, you know, the network, right? So definitely something that's going to um, aid in that regard. So that's very positive to hear. So later on, Max just asked, you know, How's everybody been in regards to Hedera, obviously, since you've been here? Lima said everybody's excited about Hedera. Um, they've actually got a very good presence there. Uh, he said there's networks that want to work with Hedera and, you know, connect with them. And he said this is what they need. He said we need unity, not tribalism. Again, how many times have I told you this, guys? If you go back to, like, the very first, like, month of my channel, I did a video about something that BitBoy said. And I did a whole thing where I said, like, guys, we need unity here. From when the SEC versus Ripple lawsuit was first in going on, I said, look, guys, you want to support Ripple in this lawsuit. Forget about it. It may not be a crypto that you hold or however you might feel about XRP. This isn't about Ripple and XRP. This is about the crypto industry. This was an attack on the crypto industry. And this is why I'm saying we need unity as a space, because when we're seeing the SEC now trying to call basically everything securities except for pretty much Ethereum and Bitcoin, we need to stand together because otherwise they're going to start picking us apart. It's divide and conquer, classic divide and conquer. So this is where we need to stand up and say, hey, I may not be a Cardano holder, but I do not agree with this because who could be next? It could be Hedera next. It could be HBAR next, right? You never know. So you've got to try and stand up against this kind of stuff. And as an industry, you're going to make more strides together anyway. Like that's the way this works. When you're growing as an industry, you're going to be stronger in numbers than you are divided. That's just how this goes. So I was really happy to see him say this. And this is the thing, like when I'm saying this kind of stuff, obviously you guys might just think I'm just some like YouTube or whatever, but like it really is just common sense, guys. Like it really is like this kind of stuff. It's, it's just obvious that this is what we need to grow and go forward. So it's good to see people like Lehman Baird say this kind of thing, because I think you'll be a bit more likely to take this kind of stuff in. So really happy to see him say that. So in regards to this, Max kind of asked him, you know, well, in a normal circumstance, when you're a company like not involved in blockchain, you know, you wouldn't want to work together with competitors, right? Because you're trying to take their custom. So he's saying, like, why do you think that right now, you know, we need unity? And he wasn't saying that in a way of like him not agreeing. He was just trying to get a more extensive answer uh, to what he had said. So I don't think Max was saying this in like a combative way. I think he's just trying to get him to expand on what he's saying. And so Lima said, like, blockchain is in its infancy. And he's saying that we have something very big here and special that the world needs, but doesn't really have yet. And we don't like, yes, blockchain is here, but it's not being mass adopted right now. It's not being utilized for some of its main purposes. Like, yes, some people are using it on a small scale, but not every crypto that's out there is being utilized the way it should be to its full potential. And so he's saying that right now with the teamwork, he's basically saying, we need to develop the industry first because the industry is still so early. What did I say to you guys in a video I did not so long ago? I said, it might feel like because you've been here for like years, it might feel like you've been here forever. We're still very early. Like this is technology that will change the world. Literally, it will change the world and it will change industries forever for many years, if not decades to come. This will be the new standard until something else comes along. 
And when standards come along like this, they don't change very often. And that's why it takes a while for them to actually take over and really get adopted because it's such a big change. So this stuff is still very early. So when you're looking at, you know, the price and all this kind of stuff, like you've got to understand we're still so much in the early days of all this right now. When we look back on this industry and in, let's say like five, 10 years, you will realize how early we were at this point. It's hard to see it now because it feels like as we're going through it, it feels like, you know, we're here, like we've been here for like five years. No, this is still early. For this type of technology and the way it will change industries and the world, very early, very early. But that's where the potential is, right? Like I've said this before, the positive thing is that we're early. The negative thing is that we're early, right? Because positive, we're here early. So we get to take advantage of things before they really have been adopted. And that should mean great value for us in the long term. The negative thing is, well, we're early. So we've got to wait for it all to happen. We've got to wait for all the bricks to be laid, the foundation to be laid, you know, all that's still got to occur before we can really get the mass value out of this. So positives and negatives. But to me, I would much rather be early because if you're late, you're not going to get the same type of value. You know, once all this is really being mass adopted and really taken off, you're not getting the value that you could get now. You're not seeing these cryptos that have utility at these kind of prices because the value will be way higher. So you've already missed your chance at that point. So if I have to wait and be patient, I'll take it because I'll pick that over being priced out any day of the week, right? So real great point there. So the next thing we've got is Max talking to Lehman about Davos being a, a you know a very expensive thing to do, a very expensive thing to pull off. Uh, and he asked him, you know, do you think you would do this again, and do you think it's been worth it? And so um, Lehman talks about the future and says, look, who knows what the future holds? Maybe we will, maybe we won't. Who knows? But he felt it was worth it, and they both agree. And the reason why they said this is because it's helped accelerate growth because it's bringing people together, right? Like for example, Lehman talking to Brad wouldn't have happened if Davos hadn't have occurred. That brought great minds together to talk. And now who knows what will happen? Maybe Ripple and Adira will have some kind of partnership in the future. So it's bringing people together and it's great minds who are thinking alike. And that was one thing that he also mentioned was, you know, a lot of the people that Lehman have met, they're all great minds and they're all thinking alike. And again, this is about the unity aspect, right? They're all coming together. They're wanting to bump heads together, see what they can come up with. They want to work together. That's what we need, guys. And that's why this was so great to see. So I very much agree with that also. And so Max, just in closing, just talked saying, basically, the industry is maturing. He thinks that Hedera is in the right place and time is on Hedera's side with regards to this. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I look at everything that's going on with Hedera right now and all I'm seeing is positivity. You know, I'm seeing growth. I'm seeing development. I'm seeing action being taken. So overall, I can't see why long term this won't be positive for HBAR's price. So real good interview overall here. Like I say, man, unity is definitely what we need. Tribalism. Look, man, it doesn't matter if you don't hold another coin over another. Let's just drop that kind of attitude because at the end of the day, it's not going to get us nowhere. This whole segregation and trying to be my coins better than yours. It doesn't matter. Like we're all here to love the technology that we're involved in and also try and make money. So my thing is, look, whatever you're invested in, good luck to you. I'm not here to be like, oh, you're in a terrible coin. I hope it makes you some kind of profit. And I hope whatever happens with your network, it can maybe help bring the space forward in some way because that's what benefits us all in the long term. And that's what's going to bring value to everyone, right? So, you know, things like Davos like this, bringing networks together, having conversations, potential partnerships, that kind of stuff. All this is moving the industry forward. So I'm all for it in the end. I'm all for all of this kind of stuff. So whatever the networks are doing, let's hope they're all striving to try and bring the industry forward because if the industry moves forward, so does your crypto, whatever crypto you're involved in, because it's bringing the whole space forward at the end of the day. So real good interview here, as I say, if you want to check it out, it's on Hedera's uh, profile on X. They've reposted it, but it's by Max Walker Williams. So you could just check out his uh, YouTube channel here. He's got Walker and Williams. So feel free to check it out there if you just want to go directly to the source. But very good interview here. But what do you guys think? Lehman Baird's interview in regards to Hedera in Davos. Do you like the sound of this? Is there anything that you've heard in this interview that makes you excited for Hedera in the long term? Do you think that this will be good for HBAR's price long term? 
or do you not like the sound of this? Is there anything that you've heard in this interview that gives you any cause for concern? Or do you just not think that anything that was discussed would be good for HBAR's price overall long term? Let me know your thoughts guys, I'd be interested to hear. Thank you very much for watching this, if you did like it please remember to drop a comment, like and subscribe. But until next time, take care.